technology has always been used by criminals. And the Internet, where people can operate anonymously all over the world, is the perfect tool. We now live in the age of cybercrime. Cybercrime is fundamentally crime, but specifically using computers or the Internet to deliver the attack. This is Fraser Howard. He is a principal threat researcher at Sophos, one of the world's leading internet security firms. Internet security is basically the steps taken to protect yourself from online attacks. Today, almost everybody has been a victim of some kind of cybercrime. But how exactly does it happen? Here, Fraser talks us through an example of cybercrime. Most people today get infected as they're browsing a the web. So as they're browsing around, they come across a site, a real website, but one that might have been hacked by hackers. In order to redirect their browser to somewhere bad, bad stuff happens and their machine gets infected. And that's what we have in this video here. As the real web page loads, there's nothing that the user can see that tells them anything is going wrong. But as the page loads, in the background, bad stuff is happening and their machine is becoming infected with malware. And so after a second or so, this application, calling itself Security Shield, is now installed on the system and this is the malware. And it's going to run, it's going to tell them they have lots of problems on their system and it's going to try to trick the user into paying for the removal of these non-existent problems. We can look at that exact attack from a geographical perspective to get a bit more idea of how it's constructed. We start off in the UK, which is where we're browsing a website from. And that first real site that we're browsing to is hosted on a server in Vancouver, Canada. As I said, this is a real site, a normal company site, but one that happens to have been hacked by hackers in order to redirect to somewhere bad. And so it causes your browser to redirect to a server in Russia This server in Russia then bounces your browser onto another server, this time one in the United States. How do Sophos combat attacks like this? The thing you notice with that attack is there's a sequence of steps involved before the user actually gets infected. They browse the real website, they're redirected to another site, they're redirected again before finally getting infected with the threat at the malware itself. So our job at Sophos is to protect people from these attacks. So what we do is get visibility into how all these different attacks are working, understand all the different steps involved, such that we can publish the appropriate data and protect our customers from attacks like this by trying to take out all of the relevant steps involved. But it isn't easy. Cybercrime is changing all the time. One of the ways in which cybercrime is changing is the target, the actual data that the, the criminals are after is, is changing its in form. Rather than just being focused on information stored on a computer, we're now looking at information stored on mobile devices. There's a broader range of attacks that therefore become possible. And when we think about security and how we secure our information. We're not just looking about securing computers, we're looking at securing our home networks, our mobile phones, our tablets. To respond to the changes in cybercrime and the types of attacks that the criminals are using, internet security also has to continually adapt. And so internet security nowadays provides solutions that aren't just focused on your computer, they're focused on your entire business network or even your home network across multiple devices, multiple computers. In this ever-changing technological landscape, it is important that Fraser and his team stay one step ahead of the cyber criminals. This research means we can adapt to new threats, and we need to adapt in order to survive. <laughs>